What is going on everybody? How is everybody doing today? Welcome back here today to a tier list video where I'm going to rank every NBA team for the 2022-23 season. You guys really enjoyed the last tier list video I made where I kind of predicted the Hall of Fame players. I do that pretty much every off season and you guys really like it every single year. So I'm glad you like that. It always sparks up a really cool debate to see who do we think is going to be a Hall of Famer. Who would be a Hall of Famer if they retired right now, or who wouldn't make the Hall of Fame? So yeah, today I'm going to be ranking um, every single team into six tiers. So we have finals contenders, teams that I think they can uh, at least go to the finals or win it all next year. We'll see how many I put into that tier. We have the really good tiers, so maybe teams that I don't think can win the finals, but are going to win a lot of games, be a top four seed in the conference, but maybe just won't get over that hump, you know? We have solid playoff teams. So like last year, that probably would have been like going into the playoffs, the Denver Nuggets. Uh, you could say some a team like that, the Chicago Bulls, would fall into that tier, like a solid playoff team, um, hovering around that four, five, six seed, uh, maybe a seven seed, but just kind of blow through the playing tournament, um, maybe like the Nets were. Uh, we have playing tournament teams, so uh, teams that I think that could finish around the eighth, ninth, ten seed, seven seed also. Um, borderline playing, nice way of saying, probably not going to make the playoffs, but hey, maybe you'll get a sneak in as that ten seed and be in the playing tournament, like Charlotte from last year, like San Antonio. They weren't great, but hey, they made the playing tournament. And then we have maybe next year, um, not a great team at all, and they're still kind of rebuilding, so nobody really had high expectations. So yeah, if you you guys do enjoy these feel free to drop a thumbs up remember this is just my opinion down below um i might put a t your favorite team a tier lower than where you think they might go so just let me know if you agree with me or disagree with me in the comment section all right so we will start off with the atlanta hawks who were pretty disappointing last year coming off a conference finals appearance in 2021 last year they were a playing tournament team as the ninth seed um and they were able to beat charlotte and cleveland to go into the playoffs and kind of got smacked by miami but they had a dejounte murray uh in this offseason they traded away kevin herter they drafted aj griffin I think Atlanta's probably a playing tournament team next year. I think they're going to be on the 7th, 8th seed side of things, not like the 9th, 10th seed uh, like they were this previous year. I think they could probably be hovering around where the Bulls were and where maybe the Cavs were this past season. Um, maybe they're good enough to be like where Toronto was. I'm a little wary to see how DeJounte Murray gels with that team. Um, we'll see how they do and how they all fit together, but uh, there's a chance I will move these teams around once I make them. The Nets. All right, so given that they have, so I'm doing this prematurely, there's been no KD trade. I don't think he gets traded before the season starts. I think he's going to play for the Nets. I don't know. I'm going to make this tier list um, like him and Kyrie are playing for the Nets. And I think they would be a solid playoff team with their current roster. Kyrie, KD, obviously Kyrie, there wouldn't be any vaccine mandates, I think, for this season. Um, they still brought uh, guys back like Patty Mills. They're going to get Joe Harris healthy. They have Seth Curry. Ben Simmons is coming back. I don't know. They traded for Royce O'Neal. They brought in TJ Warren. It's a good team on paper. So I think they would be a solid playoff team. I might even put them to really good. Like you're led by Kevin Durant. Um, you have still solid defenders around you. Brought back Nicholas Claxton as well. Uh, there's a chance I, I bump them up to the really good tier. So um, yeah, right now I have them in solid playoff team because I don't even know what the hell is going on, but we'll see. Charlotte, I, I don't think they even flirt with the plane. I think they're... I don't know because they are better than some of these teams on paper so maybe they're a borderline play playing team like the Knicks and the Wizards were last year but I think they could be in for a rude awakening now the Miles Bridges thing was not their fault I don't think they had a great draft you, you basically gave up um Jalen Duran for another first you drafted Mark Williams who I liked uh you still kept Gordon Hayward you didn't really upgrade at the center position at all too much or noticeably um I'm not saying like they could have gotten Miles Turner but hey you never know why we're, I mean, I'm not saying you should have given up the Rudy Gobert um, assets, but hey, an upgrade would have been nice. So I don't think the Charlotte Hornets are going to be very good next year, even though we could see another step from Lamelo Ball. The Dallas Mavericks, they're going to be probably really good as long as Luka Doncic just still continues to get better somehow. Now they did lose, I don't know. They did lose Jalen Brunson, but they brought in Christian Wood. I mean, they were in the conference finals last year. They brought in JaVale McGee. I mean, I don't love their team around Luke. Like, it's crazy how gross this team would be if they didn't have Luka Doncic. Because, like, Dinwiddie's solid player. Dwight Powell's solid player. It's like, they're paying so much money to, like, Reggie Bullock, Tim Hardaway Jr., Dwight Powell, Maxi Kleba. Um, it, it was Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, Davis Bertans. It's a lot of money going to a bunch of kind of role players, you know? So, I think they could be really good. Um, I think they could probably make it to round two. I, I think it'd be tough for them to make it to the conference finals once again um, if they had to go through Memphis. Like, I don't know. Um, maybe, yeah, like they beat Phoenix last year, but could I see them beating Memphis next year in a playoff series? Could I see them beating Minnesota? 
I don't know. Uh, Golden State, uh, they're going to be a finals contender once again. I don't think we're going to see too much regression from Steph. Um, maybe a little bit from Draymond, maybe a little bit from Clay, but you're going to get some more progression out of Kuminga, out of Jordan Poole. Wiseman should be fully healthy to start the season. Very excited about the Warriors. Uh, they did bring back Kevon Mooney. They brought in Patrick Baldwin. They did lose Gary Payton, though, but they are going to be finals contenders. Uh, yeah, maybe next year Pacers. They're still kind of in like a retool after moving Sabonis. Um, I'm excited to watch Benedict Mather and play for them and Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, we'll see what Miles Turner can do with a full season, no Sabonis. Uh, but yeah, I don't think they're going to be very good and they're going to be one of the bottom teams in the East because they're still trying to figure out, I guess, their future. We'll see if Heald gets moved at one point or McConnell um, or Miles Turner. Uh, next up, the Milwaukee Bucks. You have Giannis. You're going to be a finals contender. Uh, you have Drew Holiday. You have Chris Middleton. Uh, they picked up Joe Ingles, who I like. They drafted Marshawn Beauchamp, um, who I also liked for them. So yeah, the Bucks are going to be finals contenders 100%. No doubt about that. Minnesota. I think they could be a solid playoff team. Now, there's a chance I could put them in really good. There's a chance I, I might bump them up. Like, hmm. Because I think there's a way that, or like a scenario where Minnesota is better than Dallas next year. Yes, Dallas has the best player in that series, but Minnesota, you would say, has the second best player in Cap, third best player in Anthony Edwards, fourth best player in Gobert. Um, and then you're like getting into the d or Christian Wood kind of debate, which... I don't know. It depends who's on because they both have their flaws. One of the best things about being right in front of a big window is like kind of like the sun going behind um, and not being right in and the, the lighting wasn't great in that position. But yeah, the Timberwolves, they're tough, man, because I got to figure out what I want to, who I want to put in that really good tier, who I think could be a finals contender. So I'm so that tier is going to be TBD. The Knicks, I think, could be a playing tournament team. I don't think they're going to be like a solidified five or six seed. They are going to get better with the Jalen Brunson uh, signing. They brought out Isaiah Hardenstein, who I like a lot. They did trade away Alec Burks, though, in Nerlens Noel who potentially would probably get flipped um, once again. But yeah, I think they're going to be in the playing tournament probably around the 8th, ninth seed, I would say, this year. They did get better. OKC, I still don't see them in the Western Conference where it's loaded to even be a borderline playing tournament team. Uh, I mean, we're still seeing the progression out of Shea, uh, year two from Giddy, another year of Dort. We're going to see Chad Holmgren with that team, Uchman Jang, uh, both Jalen Williams is. So uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to be really flirting with the playing tournament team because the West is still loaded. The, hey, the East is loaded. There is so much talent and so many, at least competitive teams in the league this year. Uh, Philly, they're really good right now. I don't know if I'm going to put them in finals contenders, but we'll see. I mean, if they get Kevin Durant, yes, they go in that tier. I mean, we're going to see Maxi continuing to get better. Um, uh, PJ Tucker, we'll see if he hits any regression. I mean, for his style of play, he probably shouldn't regress too much. They brought in Daniel House. Harden with a full year and beat should be better. So they're going to go in really good, but I can move them up. Detroit, uh, could they be a borderline playing tournament? Like, they could be better than Charlotte next year with Cade. Uh, I mean, they did move Jeremy Grant. Do I think Ivy and Durant are going to be like super great right away? Probably not. Um, they might be maybe next year. We'll see though. Uh, Washington, they're going to be a borderline playing tournament team. They didn't really get too much better. They brought back Bradley Bill. I mean, I, I did like the Monte Morris, Will Barton trade for them. Uh, they brought in Johnny Davis in the draft. Not really a need for them. I'm hoping we see some progression out of Denny Abdiha. Um, We'll see kind of with their center situation, what goes on there. We'll see if KP is going to be fully healthy. I mean, maybe I put them up here into the playing tournament team, but we'll see. Uh, Boston. I, they they upgraded this offseason, adding Daniel Gallinari and Malcolm Brogdon. Um, they didn't really lose anybody in free agency, and they were in the finals last year. So they're going to be a finals contender. Um, I think the Bulls will be a solid playoff team once again. They were just decimated by injuries last year. Uh, they added Goran Dragic, Dalen Terry, uh, Andre Drummond. No major, major pieces, but they should be still a solid playoff team like they were. Now, ooh, can I put the Cavs in solid playoff team? I don't know. I I don't know, man. That's going to be a tough one to debate. I think the Nuggets will still probably be there, especially with uh, Jamal Murray and uh, Michael Porter Jr. coming back. You know what? I might put I might put them in really good. I think, yeah, the Nuggets should be at least the top five seed in the West next year, but could make a run in the playoffs given MPJ is healthy, which is a big if. And Murray, uh, Jazz, maybe next year. Yep, they are not going to be very good after the Gobert trade. They're raw. I mean, like, Maybe they're bored. Actually, no. They have a lot of veterans at the moment. They still have Donovan Mitchell. You have Bojan Bogdanovic, Mike Conley, uh, Jordan Clarkson. And there's a chance they sneak in as like the 10 seed. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, Portland, probably a playing tournament team. Uh, still not like great, but hey, they did upgrade this offseason, adding in for, um, bringing back Anthony Simons um, and Nurkic, uh, bringing in Jeremy Grant, uh, Gary Payton. Uh, yeah, I, I like what Portland did this offseason. Memphis, they're going to be really good next... Mm, do I think they could be finals contenders? No, I don't know. I'm putting them in really good because uh, I don't think they got too much better this offseason, but hey, they're 
core is still there. Like, Bean's going to get better. Maybe Brooks, Ja, Triple J. I don't know if Roddy and LaRavia are going to be immediate impacts right away. But, um, yeah, they should be really good. Uh, Spurs, yeah, maybe next year. Uh, after moving to Jante Murray, it's the tank for one Benayama. I think the Pelicans, there's a chance they're really good. But do I think they're going to be better than these teams? now? So, uh, I think they can be a solid playoff team. I really got to figure out, because I can't have 10 solid playoff teams, because yeah, they're just not all making the playoffs. So they're going to go there. I think the Raptors... Oh, man. Do I think the Raptors end up better than the Cavs next year? Probably. Ooh, this is going to be tough, man. Clippers are going to be finals contenders with Kawhi and PG being fully healthy, and they added John Wall this offseason. Orlando, as much as I like them and where they're going, I think they're still too... Inex okay, so the Rockets are definitely going to be... Uh, maybe next year. Maybe Orlando can flirt in with the play-in tournament. There's a way. Suns are still finals contenders with their roster. Uh, they didn't get worse. I mean, Chris Paul is the big X factor next year. We'll see if he regresses. Uh, but they still have Booker, Bridges, and Aiden, who can take them a long way. Kings, probably a borderline play, uh, play-in team. The Lakers, I think, will be a play-in tournament team. I don't. I can't see them being that bad again, even with Russ. Um, but if AD stays remotely healthy just for the, the whole year... Um, or if you could play at least 65 games um, or, six, or 70 games, uh, they should at least be a playing tournament team. And the Miami Heat, I think are finals contenders once again. Okay, so I have three or six finals contenders, three from each conference. I feel like that's solid. Really good. We could probably add another East team up here. So I'm going to add the Nets, uh, given if KD plays there. That's, that's it. If KD is not there, obviously that would change. And I'd probably put like, I don't know. Who would I add? Who would be the next best team in the East? Maybe Toronto. I'd probably put Toronto in there. I don't love Chicago because, uh, like, last year was probably Pete DeRozan. And then, but hey, we need Bonzo fully healthy. Uh, we'll see about the play. Uh, okay, so Pelicans, I'm, I'm high on them this year. Probably should bump a team down. I mean, we have uh, probably... Mm. So, yeah, like, solid playoff team could be a playing tournament team. Like, they could be the seventh seed, and they're just like, why are they even here? And they win their first game. Uh, playing tournament team, we have three East, two West, borderline playing that can get in. Yeah, so, like, maybe the math won't check out on this, but I think they'll be give or take in these tiers next year. Let me know what you guys think of this tier list down below. Let me know if I was too high or too low and maybe your favorite team or on just a team in general. I love you guys. I'll catch you on the next one.